1976, Rush released their album 2112. And my friend Michael and I are going to talk about it on this episode of Records with Ray. So let's talk about Rush's, well, probably one of my favorite Rush albums, 2112. It was actually one of mine as well, but it's hard to pick a favorite Rush album uh, because songs I love on one, songs I love on another. So when people ask me what's my favorite Rush album, it's hard to pick. But 2112 is probably, I would call it my favorite because that's the album that I listened to when I was learning to play drums. Okay. And I had a drum instructor who, he was a great jazz drummer. Jazz drummer, he was a great one. uh, But at the same time when he's teaching you to play and you're playing almost marching band stuff, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, you know, and so we're just going through the motions, but I had some really good friends, uh, but my good friend Mark, he would introduce me to albums, uh, and one of them was Rush. Yeah. And at that time, I think it was about 1983, we listened to a few of them, but 2112 really stood out because as a drummer, it sounded easy at first because oh. you'd hear the crash cymbals and you go and you're kind of the slow wraparounds. Yeah. So it sounded easy to play and all that until you actually listen to it in great detail. Yeah, that's, that's pretty <laughs> much like, any Rush song. Right. In fact, now was was twenty one twelve the first thing you heard from Rush? I think I probably I probably listened to Tom Sawyer on MTV gotcha. before that, but um, Rush is the first one I actually listened to in great detail. Okay. Okay. From the entire album, especially the song 2112. That's 21 re- minutes long. I, re- the- I remember, um, you're right. I mean, the song that everyone knew from Rush was Tom Sawyer. If there, that was their radio hit, for lack of a better word. Another famous song for them would have been like Spirit of the Radio. Yes. And, but like when I think of Rush, and I think when a lot of people think of Rush, they're thinking of 2112. To me, the song 2112 is the quintessential Rush song. Um, I, I consider Rush to be progressive rock. Probably. Very much so. And um, they're a weird band because they kind of rode the lines between being like a, like a hard rock band and, and progressive rock. I mean, when you listen to uh, like the first album, Rush, uh, self-titled, Fly, uh, Fly By Night, Fly uh, by Carissa Night, Steele, two, Carissa and Steel. then you get to like a show of hands and stuff that this, um, you know, the stuff that they were doing in the '80s. Right. There isn't much of a hard rock guitar sound at all, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but twenty one twelve is that perfect combination of like they still have that hard rock edge, but they're definitely progressive. Right, because it's not just a straight sound, the straight guitar riffs. It was just, it was just flowing. I mean, the times were changing, and uh, it was just. It, it was tough to follow, but at yeah. the same time, it was absolutely poetic. With 2112 just following, it was still, that was, I don't, was that their last, no, it wasn't their last Saga song, but it was one of the, the first time that the, the record producer said, stay away from the Sagas, and they ignored it. Well, let, let maybe, where did, where did uh, Hemispheres come in? I'm not exactly Hemispheres sure. came in. One, because there was La Villa Strandiago, which is an, it's, it's definitely an epic song, but it's an right. instrumental. Yeah. Um, there's uh, Farewell to Kings, mm-hmm. which is definitely, The Trees, I think, is on it Farewell is. to Kings. Those are, but, but the 2112 is the epic song that has definite parts and stuff like that. And it's also really the quintessential Neil Peart using Ayn Rand stories and existentialism into the lyrics to go along with the song yeah so neil neil pert neil pert yep. was the actual lyricist he was a lyricist and the drummer i mean there's no funner drummer to watch ever i've seen him in concert at any time if i'm watching him if back in the day watching mtv if there's a, a rush video on i'm just focused on waiting for the part to watch <laughs> neil for life is is Twenty One Twelve your favorite song on 2112 Ah, that that's a tough. I mean, there are parts of the song. I mean, that that almost seems 
repetitive, which I guess is part of like an operatic type of situation yeah. that it's designed to do. I mean, overture is, the overture part is pretty much the basis of it, but then it flows into the uh, Temple of Syrinx. Temple of Syrinx? Is that we are the spirits of the, of the spirit of Syrinx? Okay, I want to do that. I want to do that voice. I still want to have, you know, and I still want to have Getty Lee do a Dale kills, Slayer song it, someday. It kills me how high his voice is. <laughs> oh, I love it. I, Trust I, me. I, I can't do it. Working, and go, and working and fast food, we sang it in the back all the time. I don't know what the customers thought, but I'm sure they loved it. That was one of the main things I really, really liked about Rush as opposed to bands like uh, Yes. and is like It was only a three-piece. Emerson Lake and Park. Emerson Lake and Park. Palmer was a three-piece band. But one, guy, one of the guys was a keyboard player. And, like, you know, I think Greg Lake was, like, bass and then drums. But, like, Rush was, you know, Eric Lifeson, guitar, mm-hmm. yep. Getty Lee, bass. Yep. And, um, Neil Perk. Neil Perk, yep. But, of course, uh, Getty Lee doing keyboards and bass, and sometimes at the same time, which I thought was a pretty good trick. No. <laughs> and they're from Canada. Of course. Yeah. Toronto. No, they were... The they're... great country of Canada. <laughs> Canada. <laughs> Where the Canadians are from. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about it. Um... But that album definitely was like, when I think of Rush, when I think of like what Rush is, it's that song. It's 2112. It's that, it's that album. Well, it is the way it flows through from, and, and the fact is, I think it's actually really relevant today. How so? Uh, well, in 1975, they were talking about how there was a war and then there was peace and there was a new order and great computers showing you the songs you listen to, the pictures that you watch it sounds a whole lot like facebook to me yeah <laughs> so what hold on michael so what you're saying <laughs> is russian rush predicted facebook almost i mean it's a very i mean it's besides you know Aunt ayn rand's anthem and it kind of flows though the, the ni- 1984 flow but it really is if you don't know any better and you're fed you know what reality is kind of like what facebook does you don't know any better so it's a little i mean it's a little prophetic um yeah. so uh, with that, what I love about the song is, or excuse me, the song and the album as a whole, uh, yeah. even some of the songs on side two was pretty much wake up and be yourself and be the individual. Yeah. Very much tied in again into the Ayn Rand, you know, uh, mantra of things. Absolutely. Who would have thought that someone would be able to mix Ayn Rand <laughs> objectivism <laughs> and rock and roll? Well, that answers Rush <laughs> for 2112. And it flows. And it flows. And you can dance to it. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> well, I'm, let's flip to side two. Okay, maybe you can dance to it. I don't know. Not, not well. How do you dance it? <laughs> no, I want to see someone dance to 2112. I'll throw down money. I'll, I'll, I'll throw down money to go to a strip club to see some stripper dance to 2112 in its entirety. I'll bet you did. By the end of the show, they're going to be... <sighs> All right. A lot of people don't realize that 2112 actually has a second side. It does. So let's talk about that side. Well, there's first of all, it starts off with um, Road to Bangkok. Uh, we're on the Trail to Bangkok. Trail to Bangkok? Yeah. The thing about that song, though, is like in that song, they actually they do the... Do, 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 train do, do, to do, Bangkok. Do, do, do. Yeah. We're on the like, train to Bangkok. It's like, come on. Well, what well, does? I know that. I mean, that's a little cheesy, and the song is pretty much about when you listen to it. It's like saying train to Bangkok, but the first line is first stop in Bogota. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Which, of course, you know, the song is pretty much about the 1970s drug tourism. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it starts out and it talks about we're burning the midnight oil and, and, so that's an interesting song. But there's um, Something for Nothing, which is one of the ones I really like, is as a teenager, too, it kind of wakes you up. Because as a teenager says, you know, well, I wish I can do this. I wish I did this. I wish I was in this. Well, someone actually is very smart to me once said you can wish in one hand and shit in the other and see which one gets fulfilled first. And that's kind of the base of that song is get up, follow your dreams, is and that, do something. Is that the lyrics in the song? It's in the liner notes. <laughs> <laughs> Or, or, or not? Or is that how Neil Peart like 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 sold the song to the guys? Hey guys, well here's my new song. What's this one called, Neil? Something for nothing. Well, what's it about? Well, you know, it was a guy who sold me like he could shit in one hand and dream in the other. 
<laughs> See which one gets fulfilled first. See which one gets fulfilled. Quite, quite artistic if you think about it. <laughs> I have a feeling that that conversation didn't happen. Uh, no. Well, it might have. Is the, is the song Twilight Zone literally about the Twilight Zone? It actually is. Because, is it? Um, Rod's, uh, let's see. Rod Serling had actually died at that time, and they were uh, huge Twilight Zone fans. And quite frankly, they wrote the song and they needed some filler. They needed some filler material, so they wrote it. So it was based upon two Twilight Zone episodes that they mixed into the song. Wow. Um, and, and, I, and it's a great song to listen to. And in fact, as the time actually changes, you know, like, you know, halfway through, so it goes from, you know, quick to slow and, you know, back again. Let's see, so the other song on there was, oh, huh? I'm sure there was another one there. I can't remember what it was now. I guess it wasn't that good of a song. Oh, no, it was not that good of a song. That was the um, oh, Tears tears song. Oh, what tears touch me deeply. And there, I was, there's a guy out there thinking, that's my favorite song on 2112, and you don't even know what it is. The first Rush ballad. And the funny thing is, is one of the reviews I read about it, which is the funniest thing I've ever read on an album, was like saying, what did I learn on that song? I learned how to pick up the needle on the album and move it half an inch forward <laughs> to get past that song. <laughs> And actually, it's not a bad song. It's just slow. It's like, and I'm thinking, what is this about? It's like, well, it sounds like he's breaking up with her, but he's being philosophical. No, about no, it. you're, so being you're thinking like, oh, oh, there's, there's a song about a, about a guy and his girl breaking up. It's like, no, 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 that's too simple for me. <laughs> so I'm going to make, make it sound Maybe like if I'm, you read the lyrics backward, it gives like a secret message or something. <laughs> Your stuff is in the alley. <laughs> What's, what's this song about, Neil? Oh, it's, it's about, about two minutes. It's about it's about me and my girlfriend breaking up. Bullshit. <laughs> oh, every no, your songs have to be about the trees, Twilight Zone, <laughs> or Facebook, and Facebook. <laughs> Hidden message on Facebook there. <laughs> This song, yeah, I think twenty one twelve is in the new security you know email that went out. <laughs> there was a, there was a hidden track on twenty one twelve. Did did you know about this? No. <laughs> it's called Zuckerberg. <laughs> Zuckerberg backwards. Zuckerberg. 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 Instagram. 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 <laughs> Anyway, so the idea is it was released on hey. April 1st, 1976, and it was released on three mediums. It was released in LP, yeah. cassette, and 8-track. So you ready? Sure. So just say that. You say, right, roll. Well, what do you got? Do you, do you have something to share with us, Michael? I got you a coaster. <laughs> what, what, let me see that. 2112 8-track. Yeah. Seriously, does it still work? I don't have an 8-track. Believe me, it works. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> look at it. Look at this. The song 2112 goes on the three tracks. No. So, so, like, so it, that means it's going to do a delay, like a yeah. half second So halfway through, like, we are the space. I'm oh, the church. Oh, my God. I'm oh, the church. Oh, oh, God. We need someone with God, an 8-track tape. God, I hate the 70s. I think Hey gang, this is Ray, and I just want to say thank you very much for checking out my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more videos, please click on the subscribe button. And if you like what you see, please give it a like. That would mean a lot to me. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing Hawaiian shirts, well, when I'm not talking about records, I'm talking about my other love, Tiki. I have a show called Tiki with Ray. If you want to check that show out, just search Tiki with Ray on YouTube. It'll come up.